All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today, who is going to talk to us about uh, the adoption of early information modeling in architecture, engineering, and construction industry. This actually is a subject in which we should all be deeply interested in, as uh, building information modeling assists architectures, engineers, construction provisionaries in planning, designing, constructing, and also managing the development and building of infrastructure. This lecture is a part of a series of ongoing lectures organized by the Faculty of Engineering here in the University of Rome, in which guests speak to students in different communities in engineering. Our speaker today is Asfo Mekanon. Asfo will be speaking to us from Istanbul, where he did his master's degree in structural engineering at Yildiz Technical University. Uh, welcome, Asfo, and thank you for your time and efforts. We have almost 40 minutes for the presentation, and we will allow five to 10 minutes uh, for questions or comments. So over to you, Asfo. You can continue with the presentation. Okay, thank you very much. After that. Okay, all the attendees, you are welcome. Uh, and also, I would like to appreciate and also I would like to thank the organization organizer of uh, this meeting, especially the uh, University of Bro, because of uh, such a great uh, event. So, to introduce myself, my name is uh, Asfo Mekonda. I'm a postgraduate researcher at Illis Technical University and, like, in the Department of Civil Engineering, the Structural Engineering Subdivision. So today I'm going to talk about adoption of building information modeling, which is BIM in the architectural, engineering, and construction industry. We will see uh, several uh, things about uh, the contribution and the role of building information modeling in the current uh, construction industry. As all of you know, uh, construction industry is uh, among the biggest industries in the world like in different terms, maybe like in terms of finance or budget, and also it is time-taking industry. Despite all those it performance, it has uh, several uh, drawbacks, like uh, it needs a lot of integration, but it has some shortage of technologies uh, as well. So due to that, this sector, it needs a new technology like building information modeling. I hope everyone is hearing me. Uh, yes, as far well we can hear you well. Um, there may be some students that need to be admitted. So if you could check for, uh, for the participants and admit the new entry. OK. Okay, uh, there is no anyone who requested for joining. Okay, in case I will, I will allow. Okay, let's continue uh, our presentation. Okay, let's see this uh, quote. Is quote by Frank Lloyd Wright that you can use an eraser on the drafting table or a sledgehammer on the construction side. Here we have uh, a quote which uh, concerns about this construction industry, especially when we come to construction industry. There is first phase, which is a design phase, and also the next or the other phase, which is a construction phase. So uh, some, one of you, like, you can share me your idea in this statement. You can tell me some, what it shows, what is your reflection in this statement. It is possible to give any idea or like thought. In short, construction side, like construction industry, uh, in the construction industry, we have to care about the things before starting construction, before coming to the site. So, beam it is believed to overcome the problems which can happen in the construction, uh, like during construction phase. 
but rather we can solve or mitigate all the problems uh, during its uh, design phase. Okay, let us see some outline, the outline of my today's this presentation. Firstly, we will see the definition of beam. Then we will talk about 3D card model and the beam model, their difference. Thirdly, what are the dimensions of beam? And also we will see benefits of beam. Then we will ask a question, is beam necessity or option? We will have our own decision. Then we will see what are the tokens used in beam. Then we will see beam in Africa and other world. Finally, we will uh, summarize what we glanced. Okay, let us see what BEAM. BEAM stands for Building Information Modeling. Of course, there are dif uh, different definitions. Uh, BEAM, like from different uh, maybe individuals or from, in term, from professionals. So here, like I have around, I appeared around three uh, definitions. We will discuss about them. The first definition here, BEAM is the process of generating and managing building data during its life cycle. And the second definition is a process involving the generation and the management of digital representation of physical and functional characteristics of places. Here in two definitions, there are there is a term process. So BIM, it is not a simple software, but it is either process or methodology which allows us to generate a, a virtual three-dimensional construction model which contains information such as electrical information mechanical structural architectural or maybe energy analysis so beam it is versatile process which means we don't only consider construction phase in BIM, we consider through its life cycle. So when we see these two definitions, in the first definition, we will see something which is narrow, mean it focuses on building data. But in the second one, it includes generation and the management of data for places, which means all the facilities, which including roads, airports, railways whatever it is like for all civil workers or built environment can be managed and the data can be generated using beam let us see another definition here beam is a process that starts with creation of an intelligence 3d model and enables document management coordination and simulation during its entire life cycle here always when we talk about beam we are not talking about some project life like project period it's during the entire life cycle which is like its unique character from traditional or like conventional construction so when we say he beam is it starts with creation of an intelligent 3d model so as i said before beam is is a process to create a virtual three-dimensional model, which means our computer can understand that we are modeling a, a building or like any physical infrastructure, which has its corresponding object in the real world. So using BIM, we can create document or manage document. We can coordinate with different disciplines. For instance, as a construction uh, professionals, we have to coordinate with different uh, professionals. For instance, architects will coordinate with structural engineers, structural engineers will coordinate with plumbing engineers, electrical, mechanical engineers. So BIM has that window to share information among those stakeholders. So sometimes there are other groups like clients, maybe government body. So all those elements, would have a chance to communicate and to coordinate 
across the data they are utilizing being in their project. Let us see here the difference between 3D CAD model and the BIM model. Of course, uh, almost all of us, we are so familiar with uh, CAD model. We have 2D CAD model, which includes X and Y. And also we have 3D CAD model, which approximately geometrically can model our physical object. Okay, here there are two differences that are listed. Firstly, 3D CAD model is a combination of geometric elements such as points, lines, and faces. In the case of 3D CAD, we are using points, lines, or faces. Then after we are bringing something three-dimensional. Of course, our system cannot understand that that is three-dimensional. For instance, if we are modeling the wall or beam from the building components, we can model beam geometrically, but it is very difficult to model information using 3D CAD model. And also 3D CAD model, also 3D CAD model elements must be grouped and specifically must be grouped and specifically defined. So unless we define in 3D CAD model, our computer would not have any idea about that geometrical entity or objects and the representation in the physical or real world. But when we come to B model, objects in the digital model, there are objects in the digital model that correspond to the objects in the real world, which means in B model already we have model objects. For instance, if we are talking about beam or column among the building components, we already have beam there, which has information mean like parameters. Then we can extract it from the system and we can model. And also our system or computer understands that what that component is in the real world. So here, there is information modeling. So when we say information, before we saw like it is geometrical modeling, mean like a 3D card model, but in B model, there is information modeling, which means if we are modeling, as an example, if we take beam, it has different, it has different informations. For instance, lengths, it has widths, it has depth, and also materials used. So using B model, we can give information about all those parameters. But in case of CAD model, we can hardly do that because it doesn't have uh, that window for us to model those necessary informations. The other importance of B model, the system by itself or using uh, the same program, we can calculate and report quantities of all the components or the elements. For instance, if we are considering uh, a column of the building component or B maybe or wall, whatever it is, we can calculate maybe like concrete volume by using the system. We can calculate bar size or in kg, maybe in length. So B is a versatile and a highly dynamic process. Let us see different uh, dimensions of beam. Beam has uh, different dimensions. Of course, like as I said, beam is a continuous process. It is uh, a process means process it always it changes, it develops. Here, like there are uh, seven dimensions, um, that's three dimension, four dimension, five dimension, 
six dimension and seven dimension. And also there is eight dimension. It has n dimension, like depending on the development. Every time it might uh, come up with other dimensions as well. So here, when we see the first dimension, the first dimension, which is 3D, three dimension means it is three dimensional modeling of our structure. If we are modeling beam, we have to model all the three dimensional components of our building or like our structure. Then whoever can see its three dimensional existence, maybe components, electrical components can be seen in their three dimensional structural components, mechanical components, architectural components. We can see each and everything uh, in detail because this is is called like core dimension or mother dimension because always our initial point is three dimension and we will add values or some other dimension as well. When we talk about four dimension, we already have three dimension. Three dimension means uh, modeling the component or like the structure which we are modeling and also giving information. So then when we say four dimension, we are adding time dimension in the three dimension. So adding time will help us to easily schedule our project. So it has a great contribution in terms of creating a project phasing simulation and lean scheduling visual validation for payment approval. So in construction industry, most of the time, there, like, there are problems, especially related to uh, payment approval, and also uh, there would be a problem related to project phasing inaccuracy. There is error. But when we use this beam-based design, the system has uh, that window for us to include time, then after it's easily, uh, it's possible to schedule. Let's see uh, five dimension. Before we said time added, then the fifth dimension, it includes here cost or financial aspect. So here we can, uh, we can, calculate or we can estimate the total budget of the project. So due to that, it's also possible to estimate its real time cost because we have time dimension and also fifth it includes cost, cost plus time. We can do the things uh, including uh, both of them. And also quantity extraction, uh, most of the time in construction industry, Quantity take off is not like it's a big challenge, and also sometimes error might happen. But if we are utilizing B, it is possible to do quantity using this beam software, like beam based process, trade verification, and also value engineering is possible as well. When we say value engineering, we can estimate our future. If something happened, what would happen then? So using uh, BEAM, it is possible for us to uh, work on value generating. Quantity extraction or visualization is possible. The other aspect which we can consider using BEAM is prefabrication. Most of the time in the construction industry, the things are like we will work everything uh, on site. But if we are using uh, beam design, it helps us to, for the purpose of prefabrication, mean uh, accurate, it allows us to have accurate prefabrication. 
for this is fifth dimension. When we come to sixth dimension, it's related to uh, sustainability or green design. So we can include the concept of sustainability, maybe energy analysis, like how much energy our, uh, uh, maybe like if we take building, building structure, how much energy our building is going to consume, and also how can we uh, save energy by using our by use, how we can design for uh, better energy efficiency buildings and also detailed energy analysis is possible as well. So third dimension, sixth dimension, we can say it is like among the best dimension. When we come to seventh dimension, as we discussed before, we it is not for only project phase. We can manage things in all phases up to facility management. So here we can manage life cycle beam strategies, beam as builds, and also like operation and maintenance phase can be managed at the level of a seventh dimension. And also we have eighth dimension, which is related to safety. Here, there are different levels of beam. Beam has around uh, four levels. Of course, like it's the process based on the situation, uh, it will might it might uh, add another uh, dimension the level as well. So to see some of them, the first dimension which we know before, which is uh, not the dimension like level, the first level which is known as uh, level zero. Here, there is no any collaboration and there is 2D cut drafting. Here, the thing is, or our document can be shared via paper or electronic printers. So this is which we are so familiar, which is most of the time hand drawings or a card drawing, this can be level zero. Level one, in the level one, there is generation of 2D draftings. And also we use 3D card mainly for the purpose of conceptual work. And also there is electronic sharing of data from common data environment. So this is owned by contractor, contractor most of the time. And the other stakeholders, or other parties can use from the contractor. And also level one, it doesn't have any collaboration among different disciplines. As we know in the construction industry, there are different disciplines. There are architects, there are structural engineers, there are electrical engineers, plumbing, waterworks, and also others as well. So level one, it will not allow all those parties to collaborate together and work. Here, there is no specification for data formats, which means if people like uh, individuals or stakeholders in different disciplines, they use their own format. So due to that, it will be a bit difficult to integrate and to detect possible risks and problems at the level one. So still level one it is limited, but most of current constructions, they are mired here. Let's come to level two. Level two, there is collaborative work here. If the collaboration comes in the form of how the information is exchanged between different parties. You say there is collaboration, but when we collaborate, there is no a single sharing center here, mean a centralized repository here, but sharing can be done by using design information shared, 
mean design information shared through a common file format which means different disciplines they have a common file format so easily they can integrate with their own work so it allows the disciplines like to integrate and also to clash uh, to detect possible clashes or to detect uh, possible errors before going to the construction site so level two these days most developed countries uh, they are trying to implement and also they are enforcing especially complex structures to be at the level of level two but in the developing countries mostly uh, like it's level one which is a traditional way of construction when we see level three uh, still like uh, it is rarely achieved it's considered as uh, a holy grail so here there is full collaboration between all disciplines and it uses a single shared project model which is built in a centralized repository so at the level three all parties can access and modify the same model so there is a model in in a centralized repository so all parties can access and modify uh, from that centralized repository and they can extract data and also they can add their information as well so this can be uh, realized by using cloud data but yet uh, it's rarely uh, implemented but uh, level two uh, most countries these days they started and most uh, most like multinational construction companies they are implementing level two and also it's the effectiveness is uh, amazingly great okay when we see building information modeling like there are it is evolution mean building information modeling is something which is in process it changes it grows so it is stated as building information management when we say okay my system is going to end but i'll try to uh, speed is building information management and knowledge management here we see like the last one civil works uh, information modeling which means it includes not only the building it includes all civil workers other like water workers maybe highway maybe railway airport so beam is not only for building it is for all civil works as well let's see like characteristics of beam so up to now we saw different levels of beam then after we saw some dimensions dimensions of beam and what the beam is so let, let's see some of its characteristics beam is like it's a single data storage accessible and shared by all the stakeholders by the way we saw like level one and level two level zero and level one so most of the time they are not considered as a beam but when we talk about beam now i'm talking about beam level two and level three so especially in level one there is no a single data storage but there is sharing of data with same file format and also other characteristics is bi-directional process which means in beam whether it is level two or level three we can bi-directional means it can receive and also it can give so all disciplines like uh, the stakeholders of that model they can extract the data from it and also they can feed it as well the other characteristics is 
parametrized objects in the model. In the case of BIM, there are a defined set of parameters. So due to that, we can uh, define components or objects with a set, finite set of parameters, which helps us to easily manage or modify. And also in the beam, especially like this is three-dimension, three-dimensional beam, visualization versus representation is possible. We can easily see or like visualization is very nice. And representation, as I said, it's a virtual, it's generation of a virtual three-dimensional construction model. So due to that, we can represent something which corresponds to the uh, physical world. Also, like we can efficiently simulate what we are going to implement in the real world. What are the benefits of BIM? BIM, it has several uh, benefits. Yeah, like uh, the first here, like communication enhancement. As I said, BIM, like it has the same file format, level two, and level three, it uses a single uh, central repository system. So due to that, communication is very easy and it improves uh, communication. So when the communication enhances, it has its own uh, positive results. Like we can manage all the errors from, uh, from the beginning. It, minima it minimizes risks of errors and rework. And also optimization through all the project life cycle is possible using BIM. Here are the uh, like uh, different uh, contributions of BIM. Conceptual design is possible with BIM, like when we summarize this session. Detail, detailed design is possible. We can analyze, means structural analysis is possible with BIM. Documentation, smart documentation is possible. Prefabrication can be done on in a virtual environment. Also construction. 5D, 5D and 4D construction. Let's see, is beam necessity or option? And why we talk about beam? Why do concern about beam? Here, let us see some of the issues in the current construction. Productivity issue is a big issue in the current construction. For instance, here there is a graph which shows the productivity uh, like level productivity there is productivity index of uh, none productivity index of uh, non farm productivity and construction productivity so when we see this red graph red line and uh, blue line in the red line like in the case of construction productivity there is decrease of productivity with the increase of time. But in reverse, when we see uh, construction, like nanofarm productivity, especially this includes manufacturing industry, it increased with the increase of time. Like in 1964, it was 100%. When we see 2000, it's around 200%, around doubled. So this has happened because of different uh, technologies which have happened and due to the implementation of a new technology. So from that, in manufacturing industry, there is industry 4.0. It was started from industry uh, 1.0, which was uh, mechanization due to the uh, application of like steam power. Industry 2.1, there was 2.0, there was mass production. Industry 3.0, there was automation. So industry 4.0, if there is implementation of smart technologies and also uh, it's called internet of things so this was happened because of uh, improved communication in this uh, industrial sector but when we come to construction industry it is decreasing so we can overcome this by implementing a new technologies like b uh, sorry to cut you off we are almost running out of time we have less than uh, three minutes left Anova. okay okay there is time constraint sustainability issues the matter as well there are here some challenges current and future 
there are some projects related to uh, these are the real world projects which are uh, worked by using uh, beam software this is like a project in taiwan this is uh, auckland international airport and the railway is realized also there are some softwares used in beam like revit articad and also structural softwares can be done there are countries here most countries they implemented uh, beam as a mandatory like there are mostly developed countries like uk united states and also more, more most scandinavia countries like uh, they started implementing and they able to improve their construction industry but when we come to africa there is like limitation even there is less awareness of uh, beam so for us we have work to improve this sector here there is in africa mostly this is it's accumulated in northern africa with each other around 46 like in terms of publication others almost they don't have that much enough awareness there are drawbacks of beam there are list drawbacks maybe cost of software complexity of uh, like complexity of software lack of beam knowledge especially in developing countries beam courses rarely available here there is a conclusion beam represents a new ability of digital simulation of real world and information knowledge management in the cyberspace so it helps us in planning designing coordination and integration of architecture engineering and uh, construction tasks so beam has importance both in design and business so beam is the best technology to uh, for the efficient and uh, effective success of uh, our construction workers thank you for your attention if there is any question, we can uh, discuss. Thank you so much, as well. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much for your time. I have received a few questions, although we have less than one minute. Uh, some of them you have already answered in your slides. One question asking us about one, to what extent field information method is being utilized in African countries. We have already mentioned that. Another student is asking us about uh, the use of uh, 